Okay, so now let's see how we actually implement Grover's algorithm. So remember that there were two steps that we repeatedly did in Grover's algorithm. One was a phase inversion. So in a phase inversion, what we did was we took the marked element, the one where f of x equal to 1, and we inverted its phase, meaning if its phase was positive, we made it negative. Okay, so how do we actually carry this out? So what, what we actually want to do here in a phase inversion is if we start with a superposition sum over x, alpha x, x, what we want to do in a phase inversion is map it to sum over x, alpha x times minus 1 to the f of x, x. Right, so that's the phase that we want to want to apply. Okay, so what do we know how to do? Well, here's what we know how to do. On input x, what we can do is we can output x and f of x. Right? So on, put, on input x and 0, we can output x and f of x. What we'd like to do instead is we'd like to create some box which takes as input x and anything else we want, outputs minus 1 to the f of x, x, and the same stuff unchanged. Okay, so how would we ever do this? So it turns out there's a very simple way of doing this. All we do is we replace the 0, the answer bit, right? in this circuit u sub f by a minus state. And now, lo and behold, what happens is this minus state remains unchanged. And the effect of f is to put, put that into the phase exactly where we wanted it. So this is wonderful. But how did this come about? OK, so to understand this, Let's do one thing. Let's replace instead the 0 with the bit b. So b could be either 0 or 1. And now, what's the output? Well, the output is f of x exclusive or with b. Right? So if b starts off as 0, then the output is f of x. If it starts off as 1, then the output is the opposite of f of x, right? It's f of x exclusive or with 1. So it's a negation of f of x. All right, so, so let's draw up a little table. So here's b, here's f, f of x. So, so if b is 0, or 1, f of x is uh, 0 or 1. OK, so what happens? If b is 0, then what's the output? Well, the output is exactly, the, here we are marking the output. OK, so the entry here is the output. So the output is 0 if f of x is 0, 1 if f of x is 1. But on the other hand, if b is 1, then we output the opposite of f of x, the complement of f of x. So if f of x is 0, we output 1. If f of x is 1, we output 0. Now let's see what happens if we start with a state minus. So what's minus? It's 1 over square root 2, 0, minus 1 over square root 2, 1. OK, so, so what happens if f of x is 0? Well, in the case that b was 0, we output a 0. In the case that b was 1, what do we output? We output a 1. So we output exactly what we input. So we output a minus. What happens in the case that f of x is 1? Well, in the case that f of x is 1, if b was 0, then we output 1. So 1 over square root 2, 1. 
On the other hand, if b was 1, we output a 0. So we output minus 1 over square root 2, 0. So what is the state that we output in this case? Well, if you apply a phase of minus 1 to it, then this is minus 1 over square root 2, 0, minus 1 over square root 2, 1. So this, in parentheses here, this is the state minus. So we've just output the state minus, except we've picked up a phase factor of minus 1. Right? So it's, we could write it as minus minus. What we mean by this is it's actually minus 1, a phase of minus 1 times this state minus. So what's the net effect? On input minus, what's the output? If f of x is 0, it's just exactly the state minus. If f of x is 1, we pick up a phase of minus 1. So meaning the way we can describe this row of the table is that the output is equal to minus 1 to the f of x times minus. OK, but now this phase of minus 1, we can associate either with this it, it, with this state or up here. It doesn't make any difference, right? So because we are saying that the output is really sum over all x, alpha x, x, and then we have a minus 1 to the f of x minus. But we can rearrange this phase and put it up here. It makes no difference. And that's what we did, did up here. OK, so that's phase inversion. Now what about inversion about the mean? So remember what inversion about the mean did. We start with this superposition, sum alpha x, x. We define the mean of all the amplitudes to be the average value of all the amplitudes. Okay. And now what we want is this transformation, alpha x goes to 2 times the mean minus alpha x. OK, so what's a quantum circuit to do this? Here's where we are going to input summation over x, alpha x, x. This last qubit we are going to input minus. We do a Hadamard transform on the first 10 qubits. Then we apply this function. Okay, so this is a function on these n qubits, which outputs 0. So this output, you know, this is, a, this is a function where if this input bit was a 0, this last, if this last qubit, if the input was a 0 here, this output would be 0 if this input x. Right, let me call this input y if y equal to the all zero string and one if y is not equal to the all zero string. Okay? Another way of saying this is this is the function, this is the unitary transformation. So consider a function g from n bits to one bit, where g of the all zero string is zero, and g of y equal to one if y is not the all zero string. Okay, and what we are doing here is we have this, you know, this is the circuit u sub g. Okay, sorry, this is the circuit u sub g. And then we finish up by doing a Hadamard transform on the n qubits. OK, so, so now let's try to understand how do we carry out this inversion about the mean. So it turns out there are two ways of looking at this. We'll do this very concretely, but here's one way to think about it abstractly. This may not make sense to, to you right now, but let me just say it. It's a, it's a nice, simple fact. So, Doing an inversion about the mean is the same thing as looking at our quantum state. So this is our quantum state psi, which is sum alpha x, x. And 
This is the state u, which is a uniform superposition over all x. Okay. So what, what does it mean to do an inversion about, about the mean? It turns out it's the, same, it's the same operation as this. So first, you resolve psi into the part that goes along u and the part that's orthogonal to u. Okay, so there's this entire subspace which is, which is orthogonal to u. And this is the component of psi in this orthogonal subspace to u. And what you do is you just take the component in this orthogonal subspace and you take minus of that. So now you get this vector instead. Okay, and this is the reflection of, this is the inversion about the mean. Okay, so how do we carry out such a reflection about u? Well, one way to do it is to transform u into the all zeros vector, and then do a reflection about the all zeros vector. So here's our algorithm. One, we transform u into the all zeros vector. Two, we do a reflection about the all zeros vector. And then three, we undo our transformation. So transform the all zeros vector back to u. Okay, so we do some unitary transformation we do the reflection about the all zeros, we transform back. So what unitary transformation should we do that moves the uniform superposition to the all zeros vector? Well, clearly, the Hadamard transform. That's what you would use. Then what about, how would you reflect about the all zeros vector? Well, you'd leave the all zeros vector alone, and everything in, everything orthogonal to it you'd multiply by minus 1. So what's the transformation that does it? It's exactly this transformation. You leave the all zeros all alone, and you take everything else, and you multiply by minus 1. Right? And then transform back. The Hadamard is its own inverse. So that's the transformation that we want to carry out. And if you look at it, that's exactly what we did here. Right? Do a Hadamard transform. We apply a phase of minus 1 if and only if y is not the all zeros vector. Then we do a Hadamard back. Okay, that's exactly what we are doing here. Okay, so now let's try to understand concretely why this is an inversion about the mean. So, Let's write this out. So h tensor n times this transformation 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0. h tensor n. OK, so this we can write as h tensor, h tensor n times, we first have this matrix 2, 0, 0 plus or minus the identity matrix times h tensor n. Right? OK, so what's this? Well, this is h tensor n times 2 zeros h tensor n minus h tensor n identity h tensor n. But h tensor n is its own inverse, so this whole thing simplifies just to the identity matrix. Okay, so it remains to figure out what this is. Now, you know, there are various ways you could figure this out. Well, you could just go ahead and, if you, if you were to multiply h tensor n times, times this matrix, 
the only thing that you'll pick out is the first column of each tensor n because that's the only non-zero entry. So you, you'll end up with a matrix which looks like this. It's 2 over square root n, 2 over square root n, because, because the first column of, of h tensor n is just 1 over, 1 over square root capital N. So remember, capital N is 2 to the little n. OK? And then 0 is everywhere else, and then times h tensor n minus identity. And what's this equal to? Well, now again, you're just going to pick out the first row of h tensor n. And what you'll, what you'll end up with is, is now a full matrix whose every entry is 2 over square root n times 1 over square root n from here. So it'll be 2 over n, 2 over n, 2 over n, 2 over n. OK, so all the entries of this matrix are 2 over n minus the identity. OK, so what does this, this final result look like? It's a matrix. It's a n by n, capital N by a capital N matrix, 2 to the little n by 2 to the little n matrix, where the diagonal entries are 2 over n minus 1. And every other entry is 2 over n. Okay. That's what the matrix looks like. Now, why is this, ma this the matrix that does an inversion about the mean? OK, so this is now very simple. So how, how do we do this? Well, let's, let's understand what this matrix does when it operates on alpha naught through alpha n minus 1. OK, so remember what the entries were, 2 over n minus 1 on the diagonal, and then 2 over n every else. OK, so what does this do? Let's see what it does to this, this x entry, alpha sub x. What's the corresponding x entry of the output? Well, we, we must take this column and multiply it with the x row of this matrix. But what, what happens here? Well, every entry gets multiplied by 2 over n, so we get 2 over n times summation alpha y, y equal to 0 to n minus 1. And then we get a minus 1 from the diagonal entry. So we get minus alpha sub x. But now, what's 2 over n times summation over y of alpha sub y? Well. This is just 2 times the mean. So what we are saying is the x entry is just 2 times the mean minus alpha sub x, which is exactly inversion about the mean. OK, so there we have it. This is the, so here's the quantum circuit for Grover's algorithm. OK, so I'm assuming that capital N is 2 to the little n. And now the circuit does, goes like this. This is the initialization. So we start with all zeros. We perform a Hadamard. Now we have a uniform superposition over all the n-bit strings. Then we must do a phase inversion. So that's. As we saw, this is the circuit for doing a phase inversion. Then we do an inversion about the mean. But that is this circuit. 
Now, remember, when we do a phase inversion or an inversion about the mean, this extra qubit, which starts in the state minus, it stays in the state minus. So we don't ever have to do anything with it. Okay, so this is, this is one iteration of the algorithm. And now what we do is we repeat this part of the circuit over and over again. So how many iterations? Well, we saw last time we need order square root n iterations. And so the circuit consists of doing the initialization and then repeating this iteration square root n times.